Hi Stampers, I'm so excited to show you a technique that I'm going to be doing today. I did it years ago and when I saw this fancy phrases stamp set in the annual catalog, I knew exactly what I was going to do with it. Welcome to Stampin' with Diane. I'm Diane Evans and I'm an independent Canadian Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Now, if this is your first time watching one of my videos, I'm so glad that you're here. Why not subscribe to my YouTube channel and get notified every time that I upload a new video. Now, this stamp set actually does come with a punch and it does come in a bundle. Um, and if you do buy it as a bundle, you do save you 10%. But today, I'm actually only going to be using the stamp set. And we're going to be just using uh, a couple of these images here. So the, the technique that we're doing, and I'll show you this card. It's Here's the card. And you can see, I don't know, I, it's mosaic embossing resist. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to call this technique. But anyways, this is the card that we're going to make today. So I'm going to show you how to get this actual technique. So what you're going to need, and the first thing that you're going to need to, to get going on this is old rubber um, from your stamp sets. Now it can be from the new cling stamp sets or it can be from the old rubber stamp sets. I have lots from the old rubber stamp sets. Don't ask me why I saved it, but I did save it. So anyways, all I did was, this is from the old one. I went and I got an old block and I've gone and I pieced all of these. And I'll show you how quickly and easy that is. I'll actually just use this little piece here. So I just cut out a bunch of different um, pieces here. And you'll see how quickly this goes together. It's a little tedious, I guess, but it's not bad. So I just take the backing off. Now, if you're using cling, you're just going to have to attach that cling sheet. And I would just attach the cling sheet just right on the thing and then just put the rubber on top of it is how I would do it. But see how easy this is. Like I said, it is a little time consuming, but then you've got this block. I couldn't find my old block, so um, I just had to make another one. Um, so quite old, so you can see that they're, so that's all there is to it. I'll just put one more on there and we'll just put it up in the corner. And it's not like, um, I'm not going to clean it afterwards. You know, I'm not paying too much attention to it. You can tell these are the old, old scissors that we used to have because when we first had our stamps, we had to cut all our stamps out. Um, well, not this one, but we used to at one point have to cut our stamps out. Okay, so now I've got that part there. So what I'm going to do, this is the card pieces that we need. And we're doing a Twisted Easel card with this as well. So I'm using Blushing Bride. It is at four and a quarter by eight and a half. And I've scored it at four and a quarter. And we're going to go in with our bone folder and score that up really, really good. Then we're also going to need to bring in our paper trimmer and we're going to score this. So how we're going to go in to score this is I'm going from this corner here down to this, just gonna make sure that you can see this, just down from there down to there. And we're using the scoring blade. So I'm just gonna take that like that. And this is what's going to give me the twisted easel. And that's all we needed that one for. And then I'm just gonna take this like this and then I'm gonna fold it back and come back in with my bone folder and score this really good. Now, as far as all these measurements, don't worry about them. They will be put on my blog and I will have a link below on my blog. So I also have another piece of Blushing Bride and it is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna put that on this side here. So we're gonna kind of get the card put together to a point. Now, I want this to really stay and this could open up quite a bit. So I am using my Stamp and Seal Plus on here. And then I'm just going and layering that down on there, making sure I've got all the parts even. Before I go and stick it all down and then see that's going to give me my easel part right there I also have another piece of whisper white 
and this is four inches by four inches and I wanted it, it kind of gave a bit of a um, contrast by putting it there so I'm just going to put that one on with the stamp the regular stamp and seal And then we're just going to put that in there. Now, I also, this is something new from the new um, August to December mini catalog, and it's Celebration Labels. This is kind of like our old top note die that we used to have, but it's stitched. So I've gone ahead and I've used some basic gray, and it was four and a half by three and a half, and I cut this layer out. And I'm going to then also use this second, like this was done with the third, from either end and then this one's the second smallest one that I'm going to use for the white but I want to get my image down first and by putting it down first then I can so I've got it here and I'm going to because I'm using the blends I'm going to go in with my memento and ink it up really good and then we're just going to put it down here. Now I've given myself lots of room. I could have cut the die out first, but I wanted to get the embossed part on here and then cut it out. So there we go there. And also, while I've got this out here, I'm going to go in with the little flower. And we're going to also do that in the memento and I'm also using this ornate thanks and I'm going to use this thanks here and I'm just going to put it right on here and then we're just going to go in and quickly color the um, the flowers and also we're going to color in that the thanks so what I've done the only colors I've used are flirty flamingo and the um, mint macaron so I just went in and colored I always start with my lighter color um, first I find it blends a hundred percent better what happens when you um, go in and color this is that you start saturating the paper so we don't want to do too much at a time then I'm just going to go in with the darker ones and I'm just going to go right where Stampin' Up! has shown us where the shadowing is is where I'm going to put the shadowing on these flowers as well. Uh, they make coloring very, very simple for us, that's for sure. And then I'm just going to go back in with my light and just go in circles and blend it back in. And that's how you get so that you don't see the lines. It looks a lot better. So we'll just go in and finish doing up some of the other flowers. Whoops, this is dark. It'll be okay. And just color, let's see. And with this coloring, because you're doing an awful lot of the other, um, you're doing the embossing on it, you're not going to have to take up take as much time with the coloring. I don't take much time with my coloring anyways. I feel it it looks more artistic when you when it's sort of scratched on. I mean, if it's a beautiful big solid image, of course, you would do that most definitely. But so just going to go in there like that and go back in with the light and do it in circles. You'll find by doing it in circles, that's what blends your colors together. bit here and then like I say I went in and just used the mint macaron it's quite a light color green and I found that you didn't even really have to do much blending with it as well because the, the leaves are quite dark but we are going to go in and just do some of the dark on there as well you're not going to notice as much with the dark. It's it's quite a pale color to begin with anyway. So. Oops. 
and then we can just do some of these stamps. And then back in with the light. There. Now, I'm also going to quickly just do this one as well. I probably should have done that ahead of time for the sake of the video. Um, but for people that don't know how to do coloring, this might help out quite a bit. Um, just do a tiny bit of dark in there. And then I'm going to go back in with my petal pink. And I can probably do most of these colors or these flowers with the light as well. We'll just go in for a tiny bit of the dark. And you'll see that, like I say, I don't spend too much time with the coloring. Um, but I have spent lots of time with it doing it. And then all I did was with this thanks was I just colored in the letters like that. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same technique on all of them. All right. So now I'm going to go in with my embossing buddy. And I'm going to do the whole area here. As well. And then I've got this piece here and I'm going to use my Versamark with that. And I'm going to use a clear embossing powder. You don't want to use a white because then you're going to cover up your images. You just want to use a clear embossing powder. So I'm just going to ink this up really good with the Versamark. I'm hoping that we get that good and done. And then I'm just going to go in and I'm going to stamp this whole image. can see that I have. Then I'm just going to go in with the clear embossing powder. See, it, it gives it like that. And then I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to ink up this one as well. I didn't do that on the original card, but I thought it would look better with it probably on here as well. And there it's just like that. Okay, and then we're just going to heat set that. But see, I'm not even gonna bother cleaning off that pad at all. I just don't think that it's really necessary to go ahead and do that. So now I'm just going to heat set this. Now, with clear embossing powder, it you've gotta make sure that you get it. It's a little harder to see that you've cooked it. But it, once it starts, it goes pretty good. Because if you don't get it, what's going to happen when you go do the next part of this technique, you're going to rub off that embossing powder. And of course, you don't want to do that. So this is just taking a little bit longer. want to make sure that we've got it all and then we're just going to go ahead and just do this one as well whoops 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 I don't want to do that I'm thinking that this should turn out pretty good this way I like I said I didn't do it that way on my other card but I think it kind of needed a little bit of it to make it sort of correspond with the rest of it because it kind of looked a little flat so there I've got it like that <coughs> Excuse me. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and I'm taking my smoky slate and I've got an old one. I um I always use an old one for for um when I sponge and I've got a sponge here and I'm just going to take this and just rub it. So we're doing like an embossing resist. And this is what gives that. And you wanna go fairly light 
And the reason you want to go fairly light, I see I didn't get a piece in the middle there. I could feel it when I was um, doing this embossing resist. Um, you want to go fairly light because it can go quite dark. I have another one here that I went really, really dark on this embossing resist. And I found it was just a little too dark. Mind you, I'm more for less is best on my coloring where I know a lot of my friends like to go with the more coloring, more vibrant coloring where not getting as much of a, that's all right. I think we'll be fine. It's just gonna take off that starkness that it showed in that other card. All right, so there we got that like that. And then you just, when you do an emboss resist, you always want to make sure you go over with a Kleenex and just take it off of the images itself. Not like it's a lot, but just take it like that. Okay, so now, at this point, I'm going to bring in... I'm going to take this one, and we're going to take the second smallest one. And like I say, I did this embossing first because I wanted to make sure, be, I always find when you have some stitch stuff, it doesn't go quite to the ends when you cut out ahead of time. So it's best to just do that first and then cut it out. Now, this will be one of the last times that I show this in my big shot because I get to get my new cut and emboss machine from Stampin' Up and I'm going to order it as soon as I can, which is the fourth, and that's for demonstrators. You too could, if you did join my team, you could also go ahead and get that as your starter kit, which is kind of a cool idea. Or for the rest of the customers, it is going to be available on September the 1st. So that's kind of fun. And it comes with all the plates that you do need. Um, I'll be doing a video on it. Like I say, I can't wait to get my new machine. Um, my handle is crinking and clanging and everything else. So we'll just put that down there. And I'm layering this onto this card here. And I'm doing it with dimensionals. I think it'll look good being popped up. Put one in the middle. I don't want it to sag in the middle. And we're just going to put this on here. Oops. Like I say, this is such a effective technique. Which is the right way up. I think that's the right way up. So see how that, doesn't that look just gorgeous on there? I just love it. All right, so on the card here, we're going to have it come up like this. I want it to go on here. And you know what? I'm going to pop this up as well. Why not, right? Let me just take those off. This works so much better with my take your pick tool. Plus then I also have these all gathered together and I don't get them all over the place. All right, so let's put that about there. Now that's going to come up like this. So now what I do is I have those little pieces here and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna just quickly fussy cut these. Um, kind of taking off a lot of that effect, but you're going to see this effect and you'll see how it's a little bit different than the other particular one. Like I say, I'm not... When you fussy cut, make sure you move the paper. So many times people tend to use the scissors and cut. And then on here, I'm just going to cut around there. It's 
See how it's just a little bit different? And I think, I think that's gonna make it. And also gives a tiny bit of a shine there as well. So I'll just come in and I'll just use some of my little dimensionals. This package of dimensionals actually came from one of my paper pumpkin kits, so. All right, so we're just gonna put that down on here. Well, you know what? I actually want to put that onto a gray strip. So let's see. I'm gonna bring in that lovely take your pick punch. And I'm just going to measure this about like that, about a half an inch more than that, three quarters of an inch. I'm just gonna go in there and cut that. And then I'm gonna go in and use this punch. So we're just gonna slide it in there. I always like to check to make sure that this looks right. I find that when it's a little piece like this, it tends to move around a little bit. So I'm just gonna line it up. And then when we turn it over, we're just going to turn it over and put it back in there and line it up again. Oops, feels like it's getting stuck in there. There we go. Oops, I see what happened. It went and turned over. Let's see if we can get that back in there. There we go. That's better. And like I say, I'm just making sure that that's lined up. I find with the littler pieces, it tends to move a bit. how that went so I'm going to quickly do that again let's just line that up with my sentiment and cut that off again these punches are amazing punches, but when you have little pieces like this, and you could use them with sticky notes and everything else, but I find even with the sticky notes, it's not even working that well with it. So we just come into the back, make sure we've got it. I want to make it between those two little nubs there. Oops, just like so, that should work. Well, it's better. And go back in and change that and then I'm just going to go in with my take your pick let's take this part off and like I say I fussy cut that around there gives it just a bit of a, a border and we're going to put that with our stamp and seal plus We're just going to put that guy down there. And then I'm going to just take some glue and put this here. Like I say, all the dimensions or all the measurements will be put onto my blog post as well. <laughs> Let's just go here, lift this up, and put this one down. And I wanted that with glue so that it's going to stay there. So there's our card there. Now, the other thing is, is I kind of wanted to put a bit of ribbon on there. So I took a piece of ribbon and I've tied it in a bow. And this is that, um, that crinkled seam binding ribbon. And I'm just going to come in with a glue dot. has a glue dot on it but I think another one is warranted. I'll just put the glue dot there and I'm just going to put this like this and there's the card there. So I hope you like that. If you did like that um, give me the thumbs up. Give me a heart. Um, also if you subscribe to my YouTube channel like I said before you will get notified every single time that I do upload a new video. And I'd love to have you subscribe. 
Also, if you do live in Canada and you do not have a demonstrator, I'd love to be your demonstrator. I give gifts for every online purchase and their tutorials. And if you use this hostess code. So I'd really appreciate it. Um, like I say, if you do subscribe and have a great day. Bye for now.